Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world, and today we're looking at area scale factors. Now, scale factor itself isn't new to you, but we've looked at the scale factor of lines, a linear scale factor. But now we're going to look at what happens to the area of a shape when we apply a linear scale factor. So let's say we have a normal rectangle, and it's 9 by 6. So we know the area of this rectangle, I just times the two together and I get 54 units squared, okay? Nothing groundbreaking. So let's look at what happens if I make a similar figure by doubling the length of each side of this rectangle. So if I double the length of each side, so of course the length now becomes 18 and the width becomes 12. So these two rectangles that you see, they're similar figures. Because they're both rectangles, all angles are equal to 90 degrees. So they have the same angles. And, of course, sides are in proportion. The scale factor is, of course, 2. And if you didn't know that, it's just 18 divided by 9 or 12 divided by 6. It's 2 because I've doubled the length of each side of the smaller rectangle to get the larger one. But if I look at the area of the larger rectangle, will it also double? Well, the area is now 18 times 12. And if you put that in calculator, you get 216. Now, 216 divided by 54 isn't 2, it's actually 4. So I have doubled the length of each side of the rectangle, but the area has multiplied by 4. And this is what we call the area scale factor. So the area scale factor is 4. So that means that to get this big rectangle, I have to multiply the area of this smaller rectangle by 4. So if I double the length of each side, I actually don't double the area, I multiply it by 4. So let's have a look at what would happen if I tripled the sides. So if I tripled the length of each side, this would now, so the length of the big rectangle would now be 27, 9 times 3, and then this side would be 18. So of course, the scale factor now, the linear scale factor, is 3. So let's look at what happens to the area. So the new area would be 27 times 18. Now... If you look, if you put this on your calculator, that's equal to 486. So, the area scale factor is 486 divided by 54, which actually equals 9. So, if I multiply the length of each side of a rectangle by 3, the area is multiplied by 9. It isn't multiplied by 3. So what's going on here? Well, I'm about to tell you on the next slide. Pause and copy this down if you need. So this is the principle. If the linear scale factor is k, the area scale factor is k squared. So in our previous example, when the linear scale factor was 2, when I multiplied the lengths of length of each side by 2, the area increased by 2 squared 4 times. When I multiplied the length of each side by 3, the area of the rectangle was multiplied by 3 squared, which is 9. So if you multiply the lengths of each side of a rectangle by k, the area will be multiplied by k squared. But the thing is, this works for any 2D shape. Now the reason that this works is because when you find area you're multiplying one dimension by another. So you're multiplying the first side by k but then you're multiplying the second side by k again. It works for anything. So we know for example the area of a triangle is half times base times height. If I multiply the base and the height by, say, 4, so the area will be now half and the base becomes 4B. It's 4 times as long and the height is 4 times as high. 
So the area is now half times 4b times 4h. See, I'm timesing by 4 twice. And that's the same as taking the area and timesing by 4 squared. So if I multiply the lengths of the side of the lengths of the dimensions of a triangle each by 4, the area will be multiplied by 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, let's look at using this to solve some problems. Okay, so this is the kind of problem you might get. You'll get two similar figures, and they have to be similar for this to work because we have to have a linear scale factor. Each side needs to be multiplied by the same number. So all sides need to be in proportion for this to work. So if these sides are similar, then all sides are in proportion. So if the area of the first star is 300, we can find out the area of the second star without having to do any really hard calculations. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the linear scale factor, which I call SF. So that's just 20 over 8 which is 2.5, or you might prefer it as 5 over 2. So if I want to find the area of the second star, I take the area of the first star, and I multiply it by the scale factor squared. And I just put that straight in my calculator. So the answer I get is 1875, 1875 units squared. So if the area of the first star was 300 centimetres squared, the area of the second star is 1875 centimetres squared. Now if I know the area of the big star and I know that it's 20 units squared or whatever, I need to find the area of the first star. So, we talked a bit about this a few lessons ago with scale factors. If the scale factor from the smaller shape to the bigger shape is 2.5 or 5 over 2, the scale factor from the larger to the smaller is just the fraction flipped over. So we do the same thing. We take the area that we know and we multiply it by the scale factor squared. In this case, of course, the scale factor is 2 over 5 because I need to multiply this side by 2 over 5 or 0 0.4 to get the length of the corresponding side in the smaller shape. So all we need to do now is put that on our calculator and we get 3.2. So if the area of the second star is, is 20, the area of the first star must be 3.2 units squared or whatever. So they're the kind of questions that you'll be doing. So remember, if the scale factor is k, the area scale factor is k squared. If you multiply the lengths of a side by k, the area will be multiplied by k squared. Hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.